This week I found out something that, that's, uh, that we're going to have we, in the earth, there's going to be an anniversary date uh, that's going to take place this, this week. It's going to take place. I found out this past week about it. And because it relates to, to us and to the global harvest, I wanted to at least just mention it to you. Uh, so on the first slide that I think is up now, this from, from last week, uh, I talked about what happened in the Super Bowl. It's not my intention to reiterate other than just to point out one aspect of that because that's what caught my attention. Uh, I did mention last week some of the things that say to me, this is a moment, it's a sovereign moment. God is involved in this. Do I think God determined the winner? I probably am going to say yes. Uh, I hope that doesn't bother you. Um, if it does, it's okay because he's intrinsically for the Kansas City Chiefs. No, he's for uh, the nations coming to his son. He is one of the promises in Psalm 2 are the nations, and uh, it's a marker. Uh, and so I, I noted last week, I think this is up there, that for the, the coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, that, which was so remarkable to me, it was his 222nd win that day if they won the Super Bowl, which they did. And it took place on, on a date, uh, February the 2nd, 2-2, 2020, and what an unusual date that was. That just sort of caught my attention. I also heard last week something I, I'd heard before, but it never really, uh, it, it's like I told you, we, when we bought our first and only Subaru, we then noticed Subarus a lot because we, it, it, it was brought, brought to our attention what that little insignia uh, s stood for. And so 222, 2020, those things uh, have been called to my attention. And someone pointed out that three of the men who were among the leading uh, prophetic voices in the earliest days of the forming of the Kansas City Fellowship, which really was forming an intercessory prayer base to intercede on behalf of a global harvest to come at the end of the age and to intercede for Israel and God's purposes, that he would raise up a worldwide movement and he would begin it in Kansas City. And he did it initially through a very prophetic gathering uh, and God called a pastor, this is uh, so humorous to me, that he called a man to pastor, Mike Bickle, who didn't believe in any of that stuff. He just, he just didn't have any faith in it, any confidence. He did, didn't at, at all. And it, that's just like the ways of God. And I've found that's what many times God has done with me. He's called me to things that I've, but I've said no to initially. Or It's just interesting the way God makes the choices that he makes. But three of the men passed away in the last 10 years, the last six years. And their, the date of their burial, it's... Phenomenal to me how it was so similar. Could it have been planned? I, yep, it sure could have. Uh, the original, if I'd heard someone had held their body over for weeks or months, I would say, uh, nah, that was the work of man. Uh, and none of the instances were that. Bob Jones, he died actually on February the 14th uh, on Valentine's Day, but he wasn't buried until the 22nd. 222 of 2014. John Paul Jackson, who was also one of the leading prophetic voices and has been for many years of Kansas City and, and now in many other places, he died the next year, 2015, and he was buried on 222, February the 22nd. And just recently in 2019, uh, Paul Kane, one of the, the, the major prophetic voices of that movement, he passed away last year, and he was buried on 2-22, 2019. And I was, uh, I was in conversation with a man that some of you know, Gary Beaton, and we, were, we chatted for a long time period about these things. And after that conversation, he chose to go back and, uh, and look at some things, and so I want to pass this on. Um, we, we have committed very heavily to an end time global harvest and we have been heavily influenced at least as far as I have been heavily influenced by Bob Jones and the Kansas City Fellowship and the International House of Prayer and all those kinds of things and it sort of went this way in 1975 is when Bob Jones had his death experience and went to heaven 
and Jesus told him he was sending him back for a billion souls, uh, a billion soul harvest in which he was to influence a few of the key leaders of it. He wasn't to influence the entire movement, but a few of the key leaders. In 1979, Bob Jones had his famous Sands of Time vision where he saw these letters of enlistment and uh, I believe we received one on the very first day that they were sent out, which was actually November the 1st, 1981. And, uh, but there was an individual in 1979 that was another key individual in, in the formation of what was going on. His name was Howard Pittman. Howard Pittman was a Baptist pastor who had spent much of his time as, as both a police officer and as uh, someone he and his wife opened their home to uh, foster children. They had some 30 children that they were caring for. And he lived a life of service and of giving. And he died suddenly of an aneurysm. Uh, one, of the, one of the blood vessels burst in his abdominal cavity. And he was, a, he, he was a Southern Baptist who had no place for, no confidence in, no belief in uh, any aspect of the miraculous realm of the kingdom of God or um, someone having uh, visionary experiences. He just said he had no place for that, no time for that. And his testimony was, when he died, he was greeted by several angels, which I do think he believed in angels, and they, they took him eventually outside the gates of the New Jerusalem, which he, he wrote a book about and explained, as he was standing outside the gate, he was saying, I don't believe in this. Uh, this cannot be happening to me because I don't believe in it. And uh, he said he heard the voice of God over the wall, and uh, he appealed to the voice he heard, even though he didn't believe what was going on. At least that was his testimony. Uh, and uh, he wanted to present his case before God, what a good person he had been, how he'd uh, come to Christ, how many children he and his wife were caring for. And he was asking, is, if I'm here and if this is you and this is really going on and I don't even believe in this, uh, can I have some more years? And he said, uh, the voice of God spoke to him over the wall and explained to him, you've been living basically for yourself. You've been doing this for the praise of men. You say you've been doing this for me and for the glory of Jesus. I'm telling you, that's not, how you, that's not what you've been doing it for at all. Well, that's, not, that's the last thing in the world that he expected to hear. And the angels that took him there took him back to the earth. And he said, this is just his testimony, he said to them, I didn't have a chance to ask to beg for more time, and I didn't hear an answer. So they, his testimony is, they took him back again, and took him, and took him outside the, uh, the gates, not uh, outside the wall. He again heard the voice of God, and he said that God told him, I will extend your time, I am giving you an assignment, and I'm giving you a start date, I'm giving you an end date, and uh, you have three years, and there are five messages that I want you to bring to the church, and they were basically that the church had become, uh, the world had become again like the days of Noah, very biblical, uh, that the church was basically living for themselves uh, to wake up and to accept the purposes and the callings of God. And the last point, he said, God said, told him, I'm raising up an army because I'm going to bring out bring forth an end time global harvest and uh, I, I have already begun this recruitment in just a bit and what I want you to do is this testimony I'm giving you back your life I want you to go for three years I want you to start on May the 7th that would have been May the 7th 1980 and I want you to for three years and I want you to end on May the 7th 1983 the reason I mentioned that is because while that was going on Mike Bickle in that time period have moved from uh, St. Louis to Kansas City, and early in 1983, he had met Bob Jones and didn't like him or agree with him at all when he first met him, and as time went on, as the months went on, and he didn't know about Howard Pittman, Howard Pittman didn't know about what was going on, and uh, Mike came to uh, believe that God was using Bob Jones in a powerful way, and Mike felt like the Lord told him to do a 21-day fast, and he confirmed it through Bob Jones, and he was to begin it on May the 7th, 1983, and Bob told him there he would receive a confirmation in the sky, and that was there would be an unanticipated comet that would come, it would come on the night of May the 7th, 1983, it would be confirmation to Mike to do the 21-day of fast. It was also... God had said to Howard Pittman, when you're finished with your three years of ministry 
and you're to begin it on May the 7th of 1980, and you're to end it on May the 7th of 1983, and I'm going to give you a sign in the sky that this was me who had called you to do this. It ended up being the exact same sign in the sky. I wonder if God, just as he um, um, gave these two tremendous sports uh, analogies to the Kansas City IHOP, the first being uh, in 1985, uh, and they won the world, won the World Series, and again now the, uh, this this year, 2020, in which the Super Bowl was won by the Kansas City Chiefs, and um, so kind of like the Subaru, my m mind was just on this 2020. So many people were buried on 2020, like seeds put in the ground, and Gary said, he said, do you know what happened on 222, 1980? Uh, no, Gary, I, I don't have any idea. He, he had just looked it up, so, uh, and it was, un, it was unknown to him. Do, do you know what happened? We are, this week, we are uh, coming to the 40th anniversary. It'll be this Saturday. This Saturday will be February the 22nd. It'll be uh, 2020, so it'll be 40 years from this event. An event took place that the whole world took note of. It really surprised me because I, I know a lot about this event and I had a no idea. So in the insight, why are you saying this as, to us again? Um, I'm saying this to us again because we have embraced a calling and assignment of God, at least I have embraced uh, a calling and assignment of God, an end time calling to be involved in the global harvest and to be involved in what God's doing in Israel. And what took place on February the 22nd, another 222, when Gary told me that that's what caught my attention. Another 222, it was in 1980, it was the Winter Olympics, it was in Lake Placid, it's when, that was the day, it's not when the Winter Olympics began, they had begun days before that, but that was the day in which at least in the 20th century, what's considered the greatest sports victory in the 20th century took place. Took, it started at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, Lake Placid, New York. It's when the U.S. hockey team played the U.S., not the Soviet uh, hockey team, and everyone in the world except the coach of the U.S. hockey team believed the Soviets would win, and they lost. It was considered one of the greatest, if not the greatest uh, upset of the 20th century uh, team sports win and maybe of all time the greatest one and I think uh, you know there'll be several pictures this, uh, so this was 40 years ago so some of these pictures will be uh, a little bit fuzzy or are, 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 are out of date and I think okay 40 years time of testing you know how does that relate to the end time global harvest well I want to say this to you When we went to Ukraine in 2006 to release some videos on the prophetic calling of the Russian-speaking people, when we came back home and we released almost 1,200 copies to every nation of the former Soviet Union, um, there was a, a six to eight week time period that I spent focusing on really just trying to relax and recoup and rest some uh, on four videos that I have spoken to you before. The first was the movie Miracle on Ice, which was a retelling and a recreation, a, a fairly accurate recreation of what happened and the plays that actually took place. It was a stunning accomplishment to try and picture that, that uh, victory. And I, I watched a documentary this week, and I was taken with this. God, because of the date, only because of the date... 2020, 2020, uh, February the 22nd, uh, 1980, at a time period where two two twos are being emphasized, they pictured that what it was, it was a matchup of very young college players, college age, a few had just graduated, but they were very young college age players playing against a very mature 
really professional hockey team of the Soviet Union. That was their full-time job and had been for a number of years. So it really was, uh, you know, you could say amateurs playing professionals. Uh, but they were from Russia. They were professionals from Russia. And a time period where that was the beginning video that, that God used to capture my heart, that he's going to do something, uh, that he's going to call us to lend faith in, put time in, lend intercession in, that everybody who hears about it is going to say it's impossible, it will never happen. And I heard this week that we are now going to celebrate the 40th anniversary of a sporting event that really took place in between when Howard Pittman uh, was recovering from uh, this magnificent miracle and writing of the book he did and be just prior to his beginning three years of proclaiming among things that there is coming an end time harvest and God is already in the process of raising up people that God pictured it. There's so many pictures and analogies that can come out of this. But among them was, it was, they referred to the Russian uh, Soviets, not, not, they referred over and over to the Soviets uh, uh, that their team was like a military team and uh, they were professionals and they lost. It was a shock. And the focus of the world, I believe, will be on Russia, not on the Red Army of God, the Russian military, but on the, Re the Russian Red Army of God, which were among the prophecies that Bob Jones brought. And I found it fascinating that the 40th year, the 40-year anniversary, that's the time of testing, is coming this week. This week. And it was where the Russians lost their professional purposes and the youth won to me their pictures. God, that's exactly what the prophecies and promises are. That's what we're looking for, a youth army. A youth army that in its earliest stages will come out of Russia and impact the entire world. When I heard that, I just found... Uh, God, did you do, were you aligning it at that point in time back then? My personal answer is yes, he was aligning it. And uh, so uh, we continue to pray. We continue to pray into it. And um, I put you know, the young age of the Americans uh, versus the established professionals. It was the greatest upset of the, of the, the 20th century. Uh, there was absolutely no chance it was going to be impossible. Uh, but it began at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. What, when they saw that it ended up was going to end up be the U.S. play the Soviets, they wanted to change it to later in the evening, but the R Russians refused. And so they did it at 5 o'clock. They could picture the grace of God, absolutely. And it wasn't to be business as usual. And it won't be business as usual. It won't be. So the fact, again, that it took place on February the 22nd, 222 of 1980. Forty years we'll celebrate it this Saturday. What just about anybody acknowledges one of the greatest sports upsets, victories, upsets ever, certainly of the 20th century. The will and purposes of...